So we want to create a better cube for use with the subdivision surface modifier. But as usual, we'll take a look at the one Blender provides us with, see what's wrong with it and how we can fix it. So here it is, the Blender default cube, the first thing you're presented with when you start Blender. Let's go into edit mode and take a look. It's connected as you'd expect. It's got eight vertices, 12 edges, six faces. The simplest way you can show a cube. So what's wrong with it? It doesn't work well with the subdivision surface modifier. If we go to object mode and add a subdivision surface modifier, level three, just by pressing control three, we'll see that it turns into this kind of ball. There's just not enough geometry to control the shape. We can make it more cube-like by selecting everything and subdividing it. And every time we do that, it becomes a little more cube-like. And the more you subdivide it, the more cube-like it becomes. But this geometry is just too heavy to work with in most cases. Let's move that to the side and see if we can think of a better way to do it. So we'll go to the Add menu, Mesh, Cube, and we can talk about the most common method used to round off a cube, or anything for that matter. And that is the bevel modifier, so we can add one of those. Now the first thing you might notice is that the bevel modifier has created these triangles at the corners of our cubes, and we don't like triangles. The reason it's done that is because the segments is initially set to one, and any time the segments in a bevel modifier are set to an odd number, any odd number, a triangle will be created. We can try it with three, and if we zoom in, we'll see the triangle is there. So we always want to keep the segments in a bevel modifier to an even number. Generally, two is all you will ever need. Now we can change this to smooth shading and add a subdivision surface modifier with a level of three just by pressing control three, and we'll see we have this rounded cube. Now, if you compare it to the cube that was very heavily subdivided, you'll see that it actually looks a little inflated. It's a little rounded at the edges. It has kind of a curvature across the whole thing, as though it's full of air. And also the corners are much sharper than you would expect on a cube. The reason for this is that the bevel modifier is set to smooth off the actual geometry that you've created. And we can stop this happening by going into the profile where it uses something called a super ellipse and changing the shape to one. This means that the bevel modifier is now adding control loops without changing the shape of our geometry. So now you'll see that our cube is much flatter and this is the method you will mostly use when rounding anything in Blender. It's good enough 99% of the time, but it's not completely correct. If we go to the matte cap and change to the zebra stripes, we can have a much closer look at one of these corners. If I select one of the corner vertices and focus just on that, we'll see what's happening. Because these corner vertices are three spoked poles, the light is actually being pulled in towards them. If you look at this curvature, it's actually being pulled in towards this vertex. It's a very small effect and most of the time it's not going to be of any concern to you. But it does mean that the light is hanging around in the corner of this cube a little longer than it should. And you want light to react to your objects in the way it would in the real world. If we now go back and apply our bevel modifier, we can take a look at what exactly what it did to the geometry. And we'll see that it's added these holding loops, but on our corners, it's still a three spoked pole. And it's this that's pulling the light ever so slightly in towards the corner, making the corners seem a little sharper than they actually are. Let's move this one along to the side and add another cube, see if we can fix it. Now this time we want to consider the cube in a similar way that we considered the cylinder. It has a top, a bottom, and a cross section. So it's more of a prism. So as with the cylinder, if we select the top and the bottom and then inset those, as usual, I'll use 0.1 as my starting point, and then inset them again and use 0.5 this time just to push it a distance away, we'll see that we have this object with a top, a cross section and a bottom. If we change it to smooth shading and add a subdivision surface modifier, we'll see that we don't have enough control over the cross section in order to make this look like a cube. We can add some control loops here. There's a few ways to do it. This one is quite common. So we add two control loops across the top. Now they may seem to be an unusual shape, but this is actually the shape that we need them to be. Once we've added them and placed them, we can scale them along the X axis by a factor of 2.7. There is some mathematical reasoning behind the number 2.7, but for now, let me just tell you that it matches our 10% curvature. Now we'll do the same in the other direction across the top, add two loops, place them and scale them, this time along Y by 2.7. And finally, we'll add two more loops across the cross section and scale them in Z by 2.7. And now if we look at our cube in object mode, we'll see we have a very similar cube to the others, but this time the light flows over the corners correctly. 
If we change to flat shading and have a look at the corner, we'll see that it's this neat arrangement of quads with no three spoked poles so the light isn't pinched in at any point. And if we go to our zebra mat cap again to take a closer look, we'll see that now all of the lines that flow around the corner are straight. There's no pinching in towards the corner vertex. Let's just move this one along to the end of our queue and zoom into it where we can see another slight difference between this cube and the beveled cube. The reflection on the very top of the beveled cube has some curvature. These reflected lines bend slightly over the top, whereas on our new cube, the very top face is mirror flat until it hits the curvature. Now there are going to be very few circumstances in which you need a cube this precise, and it does come with its disadvantages. It has a slightly unusual topology, which means deformation is a little more tricky. But if you really need a cube to be very precise, then this is the method you need to use. Now what this cube does offer is a lot of control over the curvature. All of our control loops can be slid along using GG to provide very fine control over the curvature at the edges. And because the corners don't have any three spoked poles, the light flows over them as you would expect to see in real life. There aren't going to be many times when you need a cube like this. Mostly cubes are made with the bevel modifier. But this one certainly has its uses, and if you need things to be very precise, this is the one you need to go for. Well that's it for the primitives, we've fixed them all. Now we're ready to tackle something a little more interesting. We're going to make all the pieces and the board of a chess set. We're going to use quite a few of the techniques we used to recreate the primitives, and we're certainly going to learn a whole lot more.